Named after William Wilson, who became known in history as the Pennsylvania Hermit. And he came here to live after he had had a terrible family tragedy. So bad that it made him not want to live in society anymore. So William Wilson traveled from an area that he was from near Lebanon, and he traveled on foot wandering and to find what he what he wanted, and he wasn't even sure what he wanted because he was so upset over his tragedy that William Wilson ended up living here in this cave for privacy and to be away from all the people. William Wilson used to be a writer and a philosopher, and he even had a trade as a, as a stonemason apprentice. So maybe that was why he liked this cave so much, because he knew a lot about the limestone rock that he had burned when he was being an apprentice. So while he lived in this cave, William Wilson slept up high on the ledge up there. So that was where his bed was. And he hung a rope ladder down from that pointy black rock up there. And that stood all over the rock, because he made a lot of campfires. And the campfires he made helped to warm the rocks where he was sleeping, and warmed them up in his room, because this room is always 52. So it was a little warmer for him with the fire going. And he needed food every day, and he cooked on his fire. But that meant he had to leave the cave. <coughs> he had to leave the cave to round up food and wood. And he had to do that a lot. And that was his least favorite thing, because he might run into the settlers. That is probably how they found out by word of mouth from others that they had, someone had seen him and knew that there was a man living in the cave. So they did tell others, and then sometimes people would come in the cave that had no door on it and look for William Wilson. But knowing the cave like he did, he knew how to hide. So he would hide, and no one found him. Although at some point he met a man on the outside of the cave, and the history I've read doesn't tell me where, how he met him, but the man had a local farm, and he befriended William Wilson and gave him some work to do on a in a stone workshop that he had right on his farm. And in return for the work William did, he got food and wood each day. So he was paid with food and wood. And then while he lived here in the cave, and, and worked at the farm. He also wrote a book. It was a journal that he wrote. And he kept the journal up high, way up there, where he wrote in it every day. And then one day, he didn't show up for, at his friends to do work. So his friend thought there might have been something that happened to him. So his friend, the farmer, came here to check on him. And that's when he found his body up above where he was sleeping. He found him up there on his ledge. And it looked like he had died peacefully. And the history books say that it was natural causes that he died from in his late 50s when he died. And history also says his body was buried. But it does not say any recorded burial site. And there is no recorded burial site. So that's why we think that the farmer may have buried him on his land. Like with his other relatives. Like, because he was a good friend after 19 years in the cave knowing him. So that's what happened to William Wilson. And then his journal was placed in the Pennsylvania State Museum where it still is. And there's pictures, I haven't gone there to see the journal, but there are even pictures of William Wilson with a long white beard. And I do know he was in his late 50s, and it was 1821 when he died. And there is a little book that's in the gift shop right beside that mystery box about him, and it tells all his story about his tragedy and then his life in the cave, and some of the things he wrote in the journal are in that book. 
but there was no copies of the actual journal written to sell to the public. That's, that journal is just in the museum. And this is the last room we're going to see today.